Hello. So I have an important announcement. I'm finished with my book. Woohoo! Well, I'm finished with the creation of it, but not with the publishing. Today I'm going to do a little walkthrough of how I went about making this awesome illustrated kids book. If you want to see a really in-depth tutorial on a surefire method to get professionally published 100% of the time, this video will not be it. But I will go over all the steps that I took and a couple little tips and tricks here and there that might help you out with your own book. So first off, you want to research how to make an illustrated children's book and look at all the articles that might seem helpful. You might come across some negative articles like I did, why you can't get published, and how since the market is so oversaturated with kids books that you'll never get recognized and children's books are so cost prohibitive for the self-publisher that they weren't worth the effort. But I didn't listen to them. I found other articles written by people who had made success of self-publishing and they were super helpful and I also found people in real life who had successfully self-published and gone a less expensive route and done pretty well for themselves. Now I don't want to be super duper famous and have fans flocking around me all the time. I am way too much of an introvert for that. But I would like for people to enjoy my work and I would like to be able to afford food and clothes like an adult. So anyways. Second of all, you want to figure out what your book is about. I think this might be step one, but we'll just make it step two since I forgot to make it step one. Come up with a script and a storyboard, just like they do for animated films. That might not be the way many people go about it, but I think of things in terms of movement, sound, and atmosphere, so going about it like I was creating a short film that I was just screenshotting stills from was a good way for me. As you can see, I just doodled the scenes on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be good. The faster you get these ideas out on the paper, the smoother your story will flow. We will clean them all up later. There's a lot of redrawing involved here. Three, you want to figure out what format and size you need and the minimum page requirement. I had a hard time with this one at first. The minimum pages for most print on demand places is 24 pages. And I had roughly 12 illustrations for my book. So I decided to put half the illustration on one page and half on the other. Now this is for a printed book. Ebooks aren't quite as picky, but depending on the device you'll be viewing it on, there will be specifications on the image dimensions that you can look up online. So essentially research, research, research before you even start illustrating. I didn't do as much research as I should have when I first started out. So I had to redo some of my finished illustrations because they were the wrong size. But once I figured out my size and got a little more organized, I sketched everything out on plain paper and then printed and cut out all my text so I could tape it on the pages and make sure that everything flowed well. Number four, make those illustrations. Even if you aren't an amazing, awesome, hyper-realistic illustrator, you can still illustrate your book, trust me. I had a certain style that I wanted and I decided to go with traditional art and do watercolor illustrations. Part of that is because I'm not very good at digital art. If you are good at digital art, then I think that's probably the easiest, cheapest, and fastest way to go. Whichever route you decide to take, make sure your art is 300 pixels per inch or thereabouts. You want high resolution. You can draw detailed pieces or stick figures, it doesn't matter, whatever fits with your story and fits within your skill comfort level. 5. Make that book. For non-tech savvy persons, this might be the hardest part. It was the hardest part for me. Regardless of whether you want an ebook or a printed book, you have to assemble your book into some coherent order to be published. Most places want you to have a PDF file for your book since it is specifically for transporting files. I mean, it stands for a portable document format or something like that. I use pages because it's simple and it's free. I knew the first version that I'd be able to produce would be an ebook. One of the reasons being that on Amazon, ebooks are reviewed and generally available for sale within two days of submitting, but printed material can take up to six weeks. 
So that's why there isn't going to be a printed version of my book yet. So anyways, where was I? Oh yeah. Since I decided to release an ebook before the printed version, I just laid it out one illustration at a time instead of one page at a time. So the text could basically go anywhere on my page and I didn't have to worry about where the fold would be. And once all my text was in, I exported it to PDF and then went into the handy dandy Kindle Kids Book Creator, which is free by the way. It's relatively easy to work with, but the program itself has a lot of glitches and bugs, so it doesn't always work correctly. And you, if you're working on a Mac, you have to download other applications just to get it up and running. I'm going to look and see if there's an easier option out there. As for the printed version, I'm still going over my options for that one. There are a few online resources that I can use, like CreateSpace or Ingram Spark, and I could also find my own local printer who can print them for me, and I can sell them myself on my own website. But I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. So as of this moment, my ebook should be in the process of being reviewed by Amazon for publishing, and I'll put a link in the description when it is available. So. To summarize, don't let negative articles get you down and make you feel overwhelmed right off the bat. Do a lot of research before diving in because this will keep you from having to redo stuff later. Redraw a lot until you are happy and then finish up those illustrations. Don't let glitchy software make you tear your hair out and keep you from finishing a project you spent so much time and effort on. There's always a way. And just go for it. I'm always setting goals for myself that I'm not sure I'll be able to complete. But I feel like setting high goals and getting halfway there is better than no goals at all. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoy getting a sneak peek at my book, and I hope you will set those seemingly unachievable goals and reach them. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!